Hello everybody, welcome to Wonky Ankle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about the new album from Juno Reactor, The Mutant Theater. Juno Reactor, that's Ben Watkins and whoever happens to be working with him at that time. Usually like four or five different people. This is one name I hadn't thought about in a very long time. I've been a fan of them since I was in high school. I remember someone like posted a comment on some video listing out a bunch of their favorite 90s techno UK outfits. And at the time, this was the only one they listed that I didn't recognize, so I felt like I had to go check them out. And here we are. I've been a Juno Reactor fan for quite a while now. That said, Juno Reactor I've been consistently stayed in rotation in the same way others like The Orb or 808 State or SFTG have. They're one of those names I look at and think, yep, I, I really loved those guys in high school. Maybe I put on Shango or High Energy Protons every now and then, but I haven't gotten the opportunity to revisit the whole back catalog in quite some time. And having just realized that a new album was on the way, like just two or three days before its release, I figured now is a good time as any to go down their discography so far. We begin with some no-nonsense, very straightforward, old-school Goa trance. One of the first of its kind. It's admittedly fairly formulaic and on the long side, maybe hasn't aged all that gracefully, but heck, I still enjoy this from front to back. And High Energy Protons is still a classic track. Suddenly we've switched over to a straight, dark ambient drone album. Just one hour-long track. Very unusual release for Juno Reactor, and not one that I put on super frequently, but I always enjoy the heck out of it whenever I do. Another straightforward go at trance album. Not sure if this is better than Trans Emissions, but still a pretty solid release all around. The track Samurai in particular is a major keeper. More go at trance kind of stuff with some more variety than usual, and also a major step up quality-wise. I think in general, the, the, all the, basically all the tracks on here, especially the first four, are a lot more memorable and fun to listen to than the previous albums, helped in part by some of the more exotic elements involved. But this one has to be my personal favorite album of theirs overall. It marks a point at which Juno Reactor basically went full Banco de Gaia and brought in some heavy world music elements, anything from Spanish to African influence, and Basically every track is a winner in my opinion, definitely a must listen. I think this is the point at which most non-trans fans jumped on, given how the track Mona Lisa Overdrive from this album got included on the Matrix soundtrack. The album as a whole is not as strong as Shango for me, but it's got a separate appeal being more intense, more epic, and much bigger sounding with a lot of orchestral accompaniment. Still very solid release overall. And this album added a lot of vocals on top of the formula set by the last two albums, also moving into some more down-tempo territory in a bunch of parts. Some people complained, ew, why don't you stay instrumental, ew. But I'm quite happy for the change of pace. A lot of memorable tracks come out of it. I think it's quite underrated. This album was basically just a mishmash of elements from Bible of Dreams, Shango, and Labyrinth, and eh, I didn't really get as much into it as the previous handful. Still pretty good, though. Which brings us to here. Going into this latest album, I felt like I had a pretty good idea on what to expect going into it. Basically all the Juno albums since Django have definitely followed a formula of sorts, even if it didn't really become obvious to me until their last album, since that was the first one that didn't provide all that much unique stuff to set itself apart. And after I heard the single Let's Turn On, I didn't expect anything super out of the box for this one either. It was just kind of straight old school Goa with uh, vocoders. The music video was awesome though, like, th like the visuals from Square Pushers Euphabulum on like all the drugs. Really impressive stuff that was uh, based on the live show that they're doing now. If they ever end up coming to Chicago, I am all for checking this out. Though I doubt that they are going to, but so whatever. There was another single called Our World, which I didn't listen to since I only discovered this album was coming out like two or three days before it was set to release. And I did see the album started with a track called Return of the Pistolero, so yeah, it, it, I, I was not going into this expecting a massive change of pace. <laughs> Whatever, I certainly don't mind more Shango-type stuff, uh, so long as I get something good out of this one, 
And after actually listening to it, I pretty much got exactly what I expected. No, it wasn't anything game-changing or super unlike previous Juno Reactor outings. That said, I did have a lot of fun with it all the way through. Certainly more than the last one. Like, the Mutant Theater got one thing right that I don't think was really present on Golden Sun. It's much catchier. The actual hooks delivered on here were much stronger and more memorable, and that made a major difference in my enjoyability. On top of that, there weren't any bad tracks either, really. Well, that's not typically a problem with Juno Reactor either. Honestly, probably the least consistent album of theirs would probably be Bible of Dreams, if only because the first four tracks are incredible and the last four tracks are just really good. <laughs> but yeah, The Mutant Theater is a very solid and tight album. No tracks on here that feel like filler or significantly lesser than others. So let's talk about these individual tracks, starting out with our opener, Return of the Pistolero, which is not a remix, but a separate sequel track to the obvious opener from Shango. I was a little worried about this one since Pistolero is probably my favorite Juno track overall, and if they were going to make a sequel track, it'd have to live up to the catchiness and epicness of the original. And while it's not catchier, they do pull off a strong enough hook that lives up to the original. And they even up the epicness by stretching the track out to 11 minutes. And it doesn't really feel like 11 minutes, felt like it went by pretty quickly, so yeah, that's a, that's a very strong opener. Our World was a little underwhelming out of context, but still a pretty good track with a bouncier beat and the cool vocal line, Our world will never be the same again. Certainly a welcome presence in the context of the album. Let's turn on, meanwhile, despite my thinking the track wasn't anything special when I saw the video, now it's one of my big favorites from the album. The acid-heavy bass line reminds me a lot of Underworld's King of Snake, and much like that track, the groove here is absolutely killer. Maybe not exactly reinventing the wheel here, but... Personally, this track just kicks ass. <laughs> Dakota involves some exotic sounding chanting that's certainly been involved in plenty of previous Juno tracks, though this time around they do have a kind of like interesting Native American-like flavor, and there is one point to which there's like this almost operatic female vocal solo that was a nice touch. Alien lives up to its name for sure, has some occasional driving guitar riffs in the background. The sky is blue, the sky is black is the one track with prominent lyrics, uh, though they, even here they're not quite at like Gods and Monsters level prominent even though I still like Gods and Monsters. I really like this one! It's one of the catchiest tracks in the whole bunch! And we get a theatrical sounding Showtime, which has some like sci-fi theremin-like whistling synths in some areas. I think Alien did at one point too. A lot of fun to be found there, and the well-textured Voyager 304, which uh, didn't really stick out much in the track listing, but it was, it was still quite interesting. Finally, we end with Tannhauser Gate, which is kind of just a straight ambient track, much like Solaris from Shango. One of the standouts for me, mainly on the merits of it being the one track on here that was completely ambient. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's basically everything. Sure, I don't love every track equally, and we've yet to see how much replay value this album ends up having, but I do believe this is one of the upper-tier Juno albums for me. All the driving, old-school Goa Trans sounds are constantly a presence, and lots of fun, with all the usual exotic textures as accompaniment. Lots of tracks are memorable enough to stick in my head, and while similar to previous work never feels like they're straight ripping themselves off, just enough new ideas to keep me interested. Basically, this is everything I could have reasonably wanted out of a new Juno Reactor album. If you're already a Juno fan, definitely pick it up if you haven't already. If you've never heard anything of theirs before, honestly, you could start here if you wanted to. It would make a decent introduction to the kind of music you get out of them, and get some really solid material out of it too. And yeah, uh, not much else to say there. Uh, this is a solid album that I didn't expect to get this year, but I'm very glad I got. Juno Reactor is still doing all the things they do best, and I would give this my recommendation. I'm overall feeling a solid 8 out of 10. But of course, it's just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, they're awesome people. If you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.